And um, we're back in Inside the Ropes, and um, we've had this man on the show last year, and he's back again. He is the man behind K-Tape Commentaries. He's the president, he's the COO, he's the CFO, he's the CEO, he's the general manager, he's the lieutenant commissioner, he's everything to do with K-Tape Commentaries. It's the one and only Sean Oliver. Welcome back, Sean. How are things across the pond? They're good, they're good. We're all getting quite excited about WrestleMania season, kicking off for uh, WWE, so that's pretty exciting. How about you? How's things over there? Oh, things are fine. Things are cold. Things are fine. <laughs> here in the Northeast. having a, We have a lot of wrestling coming up over here this year with WrestleMania and whatnot coming to the uh, New York, New Jersey area. So we'll have a lot of names in town coming up in the next couple of months. That would be good for you to have all those names in town. Absolutely, yeah. We're getting, that's what we're trying to line up now, exactly who we're going to, who we're going to do what with. So uh, we'll be busy. WWE will be busy watching our stuff and figuring out how next to, to emulate our programming <laughs> and putting on their annual WrestleMania show as well. I guess we should just go straight into it because one of the things that's really interested me in the last six to eight months is, is Tammy Sitch, Sonny. And what really interested me was last year when she was about to go into rehab, she did a, a shoot interview the night before she went into rehab. And I remember feeling very uncomfortable about how that took place and the whole premise behind it. But now she seems to have kind of gotten herself together a little bit and she's now with KFAB Commentary doing Breaking KFAB. Can you kind of tell people a little bit about specifically why she was good for this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Since the release of the program uh, last week, the, the criticism, and albeit it's probably the vocal minority, that are, are most critical in these instances. But the criticism that Fade commentaries and myself have come under is kind of funny. It's, it's all based on, I guess, uh, misinformation or lack of information. Here's kind of what happened. The, the entire timeline, to, to put it briefly, we did a U-shoot last, uh, I guess it was in August, the day after her release from rehab. We were slated to do it when she went to rehab. So we needed to reschedule uh, for a later date. Um, We agreed uh, we would do it the day after she got out. We did it. Things seemed fine. She was out and healthy and happy and whatnot. And then come that fall, September, October, you know, everybody's familiar, five arrests, six arrests, whatever it was, and um, back in trouble back in jail, back in rehab. Upon getting out, she contacted me and said that she wanted to come on Breaking k She wanted to talk about specifically the WWE's failure to honor their commitment from her perspective uh, to get her clean. Now, she did send her several times. I think it ended up being five times to rehab. WWE sponsored rehab. Um, she has a letter that says, you know, we will continue to offer you help or whatever the wording was. And she felt that after the Senate race, when Linda, Linda McMahon was no longer a candidate, they moved her to a facility where she felt she wasn't safe. That was uh, that the level of care was subpar. Again, this is her perspective and what she said on the show. I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you. But she wanted to come on and talk about that. And I said, well... You can come on. I said, you've done a lot. You've done a lot of talking lately. You're on our show. You're on somebody else's. I said, but if you, if you agree to go through all the events and everything that happened and allow me to talk about that stuff and also try to get to the root of the problem. From my perspective, the all of this drinking and arrests, they're all stemming from a much deeper issue, and that's where I wanted to go with it on the program. So long story short, she agreed to come on. She came on. We shot the show. And then she, I guess about two weeks after that, got back in trouble again. So we in no way enabled her. We, I was contacted. She called me and said, can she come on and talk about this? And she was upset with WWE. And she wanted to say that she was making an earnest attempt to get clean. And she kind of felt the rug got pulled out from under her. And I wanted to get to the bottom of, of what I feel is probably a mental illness. And that's what we did. We shot the show. I had no way to know that two weeks later she was going back into jail. This thing was already scheduled to come out. 
um, I saw no reason to pull it off the schedule. It was the moment in time. It was a snapshot of when she got out after having been in trouble and um, the difficulty she was having and uh, my attempts to get to the bottom of what her problem is. I don't think there was anything wrong with that program. It was in no way exploitative. I, I don't really buy that argument when anybody said it. And my Lord, are we not going to put anyone on the news? Are we not going to put anyone on interview programs, on television, news magazine programs who have had trouble? And that's the foundation for half of these shows, trying to get to the bottom of what happened. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get to the bottom of what happened with the arrests and what is happening with her. When you do an interview like that with somebody like Tammy, who's been in the news so much in the last few months, I think it's in the trailer that you talk about how she's done interviews before with other people where she said that she maybe doesn't tell the truth the whole time. Is there an element of worry when you do a program like Breaking Katie with her? Because essentially the premise is that you want to try and get to the bottom of this issue, like you say. Is there a worry there that she may sort of try and work you as well, or were you kind of confident that you would be able to sort of break through the work, so to speak? Listen, what percentage of the people in this business aren't working when they do an interview? I think I was able to separate in my own head, and I'm sure the viewer could also, the things that were coming out of her mouth that were uh, prepared. I got a sense a few times during the interview that I was listening to something that had been said to the bathroom mirror many times. But then I did get a sense that, that there were some authentic emotional moments. And, you know, I don't have a lie detector there. I can only probe instinctively where I feel the interview needs to go. Um, and I think it went to those places. Again, my goal was to get a timeline and her thought process uh, through those five arrests and the associated madness that was going on and then on top of that where she really thinks the problem is she's i mean there's consistently tumultuous and dysfunctional relationships with men um it, it's not just one problem as we said in in the program so yeah i i get the sense that there's a, there's a lot of work to tammy uh not just in this interview but but probably in her daily life probably Others would know better than I, who spent more time with her, but I think that's a personality trait of hers, which makes her great for the wrestling business, so maybe not so good as a mate. But one of the other things that's just recently happened that I wanted to get your opinion on is Bruno San Martino is now going into the WWE Hall of Fame. And we had Bruno on our show last year, and he was absolutely adamant that that would never happen. And obviously now it is. Did you ever think that was going to happen? Did you ever see it coming, or were you shocked? Um. I was kind of close to the situation uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was a, it was a very last-minute decision, by the way, on Bruno's part. Um, we, we were talking about doing something with Bruno. So the agent had made us aware of the fact that the only thing that would get in our way of producing the program that we were planning on was Hunter was pretty feverishly pursuing Bruno for the Hall of Fame. and. Um, I know the money wasn't where Bruno expected it to be, and some of the terms of the deal weren't where Bruno wanted it to be. Um, uh, I got word that it looked like Bruno wasn't going to do it, Paul the that is, but that Hunter might be flying out to Pittsburgh to talk to him, and then within a matter of days, uh, the announcement came out that Bruno had accepted the offer and was going in. Listen, Bruno deserves, if any Hall of Fame in, involving wrestling, Bruno deserves to be in. So whether it's the WWE's version of the Hall of Fame, their entertainment-based Hall of Fame, or it's the one in Amsterdam, New York, or whatever, your Hall of Fame, whoever's Hall of Fame, Bruno needs to be there. Um, kind of interesting that Bruno is following Edge and Coco Beware into a, any wrestling Hall of Fame. You know, so what can you say about it? At last, Bruno goes in. There's a few times that you've brought up this edge comparison. It's almost like that's the one that really gets you, because there's a couple of times you've brought it up. Yeah, I guess it does. I guess it does, Kenny. I just, I don't know. I can understand people who get inducted into Hall of Fames, whether it be uh, professional football, baseball, wrestling, you know, one or two years after retiring. I understand 
there are names so big, uh, Wayne Gretzky or uh, Joe Montana in football or, or uh, Barry Bonds in baseball. There are names, maybe, of folks that should be inducted immediately after they retire just because of the crime that it would be to have one induction ceremony since their retirement where they are not put in. Um, and, yeah, I guess now that I think about it, Edge clearly fits that bill. The thing that I always found really bizarre was that when Coco Beware got inducted, that it was Honky Tonk Man that inducted him, because you just figured that would have been the other way around. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point, too, yeah. There's only so many times you can get worked up about a Hall of Fame that's a work, so... Yeah, it's an entertainment show. It, it's become just another part of their programming. It's a, an extended version of Raw. It's Raw on Friday night now, so... <laughs> It's uh, well, I don't want to crap on it too much. Bruno's going in. Let let him have his moment. Uh, the speech will be very interesting. Did you ever think that Bruno would actually agree to it? Yes, because everyone's got an ego, and this is validation in some way for Bruno. How, however silly it may seem, he doesn't have anything to prove to anyone clearly. But everyone's got an ego, and and if you play to someone's ego the right way. I think he could talk them into just about anything. So, yeah, I thought there would be a day where, where Bruno would go in. And also, the WWE wants to legitimize themselves and this Hall of Fame entertainment show that they do as being somewhat of a legitimate Hall of Fame. Um, as far as I know, the other Halls of Fame in sport uh, involve a, a voting process by sports writers and athletes themselves, even the the Academy Awards or the Screen Actors Guild Awards. You know, it's all participant voting. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's the case with the WWE, so I don't, I don't think it'll ever be able to legitimize itself unless it asks writers outside of their WWE universe to change, choose the names. But we're all happy for Bruno, I'm sure. And if you're in the UK and you're listening, you can go to kfabcommentriesuk.com and pick up all the discs. And if you're in the US, you can just go to kfabcommentries.com. How can people get in touch with you guys on social media? Our Twitter is kfabcomment, and uh, we have a Facebook page, and we have a, uh, a kfabe memories forum. We have uh, our own forum within their message board, um, and we've got a YouTube channel. Go there and see all of our uh, trailers and outtakes and snippets and fun things we put up there of a short-form nature. And we're going to be coming to Roku. So if you've got a Roku box, I think this is the month, finally, that everything is going to be cleared up and we'll be able to be on Roku via our uh, on-demand distributor, which is WWN, World Wrestling Network. And we're actually on demand now on your computer. If you go to WWNlive.com, you can watch any of our programming right now. You don't have to wait for the disc to come. You can click a few buttons and be streaming our programming right there. So that's how you can get us. Sean, thank you very much for coming on again, and uh, hopefully we'll speak to you soon.